we did then was gave them a special intervention program, a phonemic uh, awareness program, and a letter naming program. And they got it three times a week for 20 minutes at a time. And there were about 20 kids in each group. And then we'd assess them again in January of that same year. Not just those kids, not the 30%, um, but we, all 450 kids were assessed again. And anybody who was in the mainstream, who we deemed at risk, would come into the intervention group. Anybody from the intervention group who was now where they should be came out of the intervention group and went back into the mainstream. So we were able to do this twice a year in September and January, and we did it in kindergarten, again in first grade, September and January, and the first grade interventions changed a little bit. Some kids still needed phonemic awareness and letter naming, but other kids moved on to phonics and needed some phonics intervention. Same thing though, 20 minutes, three times a week. Okay, and then second grade, again in September and again in January, Again, all 450 kids, kids moving in and out of that intervention group. And then by the end of second grade, um, was the first time in California kids are tested in reading statewide. So what they were doing, um, what they were doing in previous second grades, they were ranging anywhere from 11 students to 17 or 18 students. Uh, were being identified for resource room services uh, by the end of second grade. With our group that started in kindergarten, first and second grade, only, and these were comparable size classes or groups of kids, um, only two kids were referred for special services. So we reduced it by about 80, 85 percent. And then when you put an economic argument to it, um, in California at that time, it was about $3,000 a year for uh, a student to be in the special ed program. You multiply that um, by the number of kids who we saved and ended up being, well, at the end of the day, for that one class over 10 years, there was a savings of $270,000. Um, so uh, it, was, it was considerable, and if you start multiplying, that's just for one class, and you consider you have, you know, 10 classes, you're talking for a small school district over $2, two million of savings in that time frame um, in total. So I presented this um, as part of a reading presentation a few years ago, and there were some state senators and representatives at that, and it really got people fired up for uh, looking at literacy a little differently here. So in Minnesota, if we were to apply the same new literacy framework, um, to Minnesota based on 2005 census numbers, uh, we would, the cost of one year of special education for reading disabled is, um, for all of Minnesota, based on these census numbers and percentages, um, is about $8 million. So it's considerable economic savings, not to mention um, what the savings in self-esteem, frustration, anxiety with school just points again to the importance of really good instruction, of, of really um, precise measurement and diagnostic tools to use to identify kids who are struggling and, and how are we going to intervene with them. So the, it's, it's all out there. Uh, you know, we know the science of reading. There's no debate on how to teach reading. Uh, the, the evidence is there, we just have to use it, and you know, we're, we're slow to do so. Um, and and I, don't, I just think our educational institutions are not real agents of change. There's, it's very hard to change um, the, the way we approach the teaching of reading, and it takes strong leadership, whether it's at the state level, in the governor's office, the commissioner of education, to make statewide reform like they did in Florida, or whether it's within a building. But we had some very good luck, um, it wasn't luck, we, uh, through some really hard work and dedication, uh, we partnered with uh, Minneapolis Public School two years ago, and high at risk, 85% plus K 
kids on free and reduced lunches, uh, a lot of ELL, English language learners, uh, over 50-60% uh, of ELL kids. And um, we went in with a very uh, explicit program and their kindergarten kids had always been in the bottom of 20% of growth in reading in one year. Um, and by the end of one year, that group had made the second most progress of any kindergarten uh, class in, or any kindergarten group in Minneapolis. Uh, so we know we can affect change. What it took though was um, a building leader, building principal who said, this is what we're going to do, this is why we're going to do it. And um, it took teachers understanding what we were doing and why we were doing it and buying into it. When we got teacher buy-in, and the strong leadership in the, from the principal standpoint in terms of creating a schedule and, 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 and reading groups that would work um, and believing that the approach was right. Um, you know, miracles can happen. So I know it can happen in any school um, if, if people, if adults uh, get lined up behind it. So um, that's what's happened in Florida. And I think, you know, again, this We were to, to, to be faithful with these, actually not four, I'm, I'm pretty good with reading, but not so good in math. There are actually five components, uh, not four. If we were to be faithful to these five components of literacy, uh, I think we could, we could show the same, if not better change uh, results as Florida did. So that's it was right on an hour, so <laughs> as I, tried to be. So any, uh, any questions or comments at all? Does it make sense? Yeah, I, and again, I go back to probably the, you know, really if, if we don't start using data to make our decisions, objective decisions, um, we're stuck. So if you're, if, if you're a concerned parent in a school, ask Ask your, the school principal, ask the special ed director, ask your classroom teacher, uh, what, what are we doing for progress monitoring? And if you're a teacher, bring back this idea. This Ames Web, um, this Ames Web uh, produced by Pearson uh, is, is really quite cheap. I think it's about $4 per student and you have 30, you have all this graphing ability. There's a lot more behind the scenes than just this graphing. Uh, but you have all this graphing ability and there are 36 passages um, that are at grade level, uh, at w whatever grade, you know, first through eighth. Um, so for $4 a student, it's really uh, a very uh, reasonable tool, I think, to use with kids. Okay, there you go. Thanks for coming by.